Hello everyone. Um, this is going to be hopefully a quick uh, video. It shouldn't take me too long going through primary and secondary data. Um, my my takeaway is on the way actually, so I need to get this over with pretty quickly. Um, but um, <clears throat> uh, primary and secondary data. Um, <clears throat> there's only two or three slides to this, so it really isn't going to take very long. You probably or possibly know what I mean by primary and secondary data regarding um, research from school. Uh, but I will go through them very, very briefly. Uh, I will also go through the evaluations quite quickly as well. Now, when we talk about primary data, this is the type of data that's collected directly from the participants, right? The, the first hand, I cannot, I cannot express to you how much that terminology is actually quite key to describing primary data. So primary data is collected directly from the participants first hand. It's when the researcher is actually collecting data for their own piece of research. Now, the reason why this is so important is if you ask people to describe primary data most of the time, they say something like, Oh, it's when the researcher collects the detail, the, the, the data themselves. But that's not specific enough um, and actually does apply to secondary data as well. In secondary data, the researcher is collecting their data themselves. It's just that they weren't the original ones to do that. And they're not doing it firsthand from participants. So uh, that that idea about directly from participants first hand is actually uh, incredibly key you don't write that you ain't getting the marks secondary data um, on the other hand is when researchers are collecting data that has already been collected previously by other pieces but both through you know in other pieces of research by other researchers um, so they don't usually have their own participants. Um, if, if we have looked at already, uh, Van Eisendorn, um, in the attachment topic, we may or may not have looked at this already, but uh, Van Eisendorn uh, is a form of secondary data. And that form is via what's called a meta-analysis. So meta-analysis is a really powerful piece of research where you're collecting data from tens sometimes hundreds of pieces of research into one big piece of research which basically sums up those 10 or 30 or 100 pieces of research so that is pretty much the a01 <clears throat> that's pretty much the a01 in terms of strengths and weaknesses that, uh, of primary data let's begin with so if we're looking at the strengths the major benefit to primary data is that it's more tailored to what it is you're actually studying so if you're creating a piece of research from the ground up the 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 primary data you get or the research method or the data collection method you use is going to be really connected to what the, the study that you're doing. So, if, I don't know, for, for example, uh, I, can't, I, don't, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but that, that term there is really key. Uh, and that term there, actually, authentic and tailored. The, the, the way you collect your data, if you're doing it primarily, um, through primary data uh, is going to be really tailored to what it is you're actually um, collecting. It tends to be more objective, though that's not always the case. Personally, I think that's a bit of a weak strength myself. Um, so if, if, for example, if I'm, if I'm collecting data myself from the participants, I might be doing that using an interview or a self-report, you know, some sort of questionnaire maybe, or an observation. That's not that's not objective. So personally, if, if I were you, I wouldn't write that because I actually think that is a, a quite a poor strength. In terms of the weaknesses, though, it does take more time. You're having to create your own data collection method yourself. You know, you're having to collect the data, you know, for, having to recruit the participants. That takes ages. Sampling methods, you know, stratified, systematic. Recruiting the participants takes ages. Testing the participants takes ages. Interpreting the data takes ages as well so uh, d doing everything yourself does take a long time um, 
And they're the two major weaknesses, right? Collecting the data and actually collecting the participants is actually quite problematic. Now, as always in research methods, the strengths of one way are usually the weaknesses of another way. If I were to flip this on its head, if I were to flip this on, I don't know why the, the uh, weaknesses aren't being, uh, but whatever. Um, if I were to flip this on the head in terms of strengths, um, it's not as, ex secondary data is not as expensive because you're not, having to collect your samples you're not having to recruit people and, and spend money on advertising or you're not you're not spending a lot of your time uh, so i guess you could put this as secondary data is not as labor intensive so it doesn't you know, take up a lot more of your time it doesn't cost you a lot more money you know in terms of man hours or woman hours it's um it's a lot less because other people have already done the work. You know what I mean? Other people have already done the work. And it is very powerful. It's, it tends to be very powerful. Um, one very important point about secondary data, by the way, is that as it doesn't take up much, take up that much time to collect, right? As, as we, we've kind of said in the first point, as it does, as it's not as labor intensive to collect, that means you can collect a lot more data. So secondary data tends to be collected in its droves, you know, really, really powerful pieces of research. You're talking to like meta, like I say, meta-analyses use secondary data and they're really powerful. They give an incredibly powerful and robust oversight about a certain behavior. Um, <clears throat> so, when you when you collect a lot of secondary data it does tend to pack a punch it does tend to pack a punch it does tend to be uh, i guess quite a big authority in terms of explaining why a behavior is happening etc cetera, etc cetera. so for example van eisendorn's research his meta-analyses into how different countries uh reared their children uh was quite powerful you know if i did one piece of research in china about and using the strange situation it's not really that powerful to be honest so I, it, you would argue you could find freak findings but another strong I'm, I'm gonna add another strength here of secondary data secondary data oh i thought that was my takeaway then uh secondary data when collected in its droves um actually reduces the chances of freak findings because if you're collecting them from 30 pieces of research, that's they're not freak findings if you're, if you're collecting the, them from 30 pieces of research. Anyway, I'm, I'm going on a little bit. Um, one problem, I guess, is... Uh, uh, one, one bit of a problem, I guess, is that some of the data you are collecting from previous pieces of research are actually... Uh, they could be more than five years old, and thus they may lack temporal validity. So... Uh, that's pretty straightforward, I think, or I think it is anyway. And the other big factor, and this is quite a big factor, is that if you want to make it powerful, you have to be looking to collect at least 30 pieces of research, you know, data from 30 pieces of research for you to have a powerful punch to what you're finding. How many pieces, how many studies did Van Eisendorn use in his meta-analysis? 32. So you're looking to, if you're looking to have at least 30 pieces of research. That is it. That is it for primary and secondary data. Not really a lot to it. You need to know the strengths. You need to know the weaknesses. These do come up relatively often, I think, actually, um, relatively often. But uh, you typically only tend to come up in one to four markers, I would say. So you're not going to need to know much more than these strengths. But know these strengths, you will need to. Peace out.